Hey everybody, I'm Stelios. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're building an awesome bedroom cabinet. Woo! All right, so our work starts here at the table saw. We're just getting our uh, pieces cut down for the carcass. Uh, here, um, I'm ripping it down to 11 inches. I'm going to get my two sides and my two tops. Just remember, when you're ripping down giant pieces of uh, plywood at the table saw, uh, be safe and keep your pieces tight to the fence. Now we're ready to cross cut our pieces. I've got my cross cut sled. I'm just squaring up one end, uh, measuring down uh, 24 inches. That's gonna be the size of my top and bottoms. And then I'm gonna measure over 36 inches. That's gonna be the length of my sides. Here I've gone ahead and uh, buried uh, the dado stack in a sacrificial fence. Uh, this is going to allow me to rabbit uh, the top and bottoms of my side pieces to accommodate uh, the top and bottom portion of the carcass. Now that our rabbits are completed, uh, go ahead, uh, make sure your dado blade is three quarters of an inch away from your fence and run the rest of the grooves around the outside of the carcass. Uh, this is where the back panel is going to sit. I'm going to be using a French cleat system to hang this up on the wall and uh, this is going to accommodate for that system. You'll see later on. So now we're uh, ready to lay out the dados for the tops and bottoms. Uh, from the bottom of the shelf, my first shelf is going to sit uh, 10 inches up from the bottom and the top shelf is going to sit 11 and a half inches from the top. Here we're getting ready to do a little dry assembly and just make sure everything fits good and tight and then I've got all the right numbers. Now that we've got our regular saw blade in, uh, grab the rest of the plywood, uh, rip it down to 24 inches. This is going to fit the groove that we cut and uh, then we're going to go ahead and cross cut it to length. So the length of my panel, I got 35 and 13 sixteenths. Having a crosscut sled in the shop that can rip down such a big width has been an invaluable asset to the shop. Here we're uh, cutting the rest of the two shells, 24 inches a piece, and then we're gonna go ahead and rip them down to length. It's finally time for some glue up using that tight bond too. Uh, getting everything hammered in place, making sure everything is square, toenailing uh, the shelves in place. I'm gonna be toenailing uh, the two shelves and the top and bottom. 
and then I'm going to be throwing some uh, pins at the top of the back panel and the bottom of the back panel as well as a few screws to keep it uh, good and tight. This is going to be hanging from a wall and it will be heavy. That's how it's done. That's how you build yourself a super strong carcass. Now be a great time to grab your tape measure and measure out the measurements for the face frame. Now I'm back at the table saw and I'm just uh, squaring one in there and uh, cutting out the pieces for my face frame. All right, uh, here I'm using the Craig jig to attach my face frame parts to themselves. Once all the holes have been uh, pre-drilled, uh, go ahead and grab yourself uh, some glue, uh, spread it on the joint. Uh, here I'm using a couple clamps to keep the pieces even with uh, one another, and then go ahead and grab yourself a screw and uh, have it squeeze these joints together. Here you can tell I am not a firm believer in the tape measure. I always like bringing my piece to the workpiece and uh, using that for my measurements. I'm a lot more accurate that way. We got the face frame uh, done for the medicine cabinet. It's going to sit on here uh, just like that. Uh, I absolutely love the Craig jig. It really makes uh, making these face frames for these cabinets super easy and it's a really fast and strong way to get it done. So if this was a stain piece, I would have gone ahead and used biscuits to attach my face frame, but it's not, so I'd grab the nail gun. So now we've moved on to building up our cornice. Uh, here I've got a five and a half inch piece of poplar that I want to set up top and then I'm going to have a piece of crown molding butt up against that, but I want to bury uh, most of that top piece. That's what that first line is, uh, two inches in from each edge. And now I brought the piece back to the workpiece. I'm lining up where I need to make my 45s. Witness mark, heading over to the saw, get them chopped up. The Craig jig did such a phenomenal job on that face frame, I decided to use it for uh, this part of the cornice. Now I've grabbed my uh, palm router with an OG bit and I'm just putting a profile uh, here on this portion of the cornice. Then I'll go ahead and grab my uh, glue, uh, grab some uh, inch and a quarter screws and uh, get all this tighten down. Now we've moved on to getting the crown molding cut. Always remember you cut this stuff upside down. And all it takes is some glue and brads and you'll be able to get this all pieced together. Now you're in the home stretch. I've got that uh, filler and I'm filling in all my nail hole. So here we're getting our rails and styles cut down to the appropriate widths. So here at the table saw, uh, I'm using it to get that quarter inch groove uh, the fly plywood's gonna fit right into. I'm making my first cut. I'm flipping it 180 degrees. Then I'm heading back to the plywood to make sure it's a tight, snug fit. The grooves are complete. Now cut your rails to the appropriate size and don't forget to include the size of the tenon. Just using the kerf of my uh, saw blade, I'm cutting my half inch tenons. Uh, this is a lot easier than setting up the whole uh, dado stack. 
just remember, uh, take your time, go slow, all will be fine. So look at that, we've got ourselves two gorgeous doors, half inch overlay. Uh, that's the hinges that I ended up using were uh, half inch overlay hinges. We've got two doors. Now, all we've got to do, let's cut out our panel. Grab your glue, uh, grab your mallet, grab your uh, block plane. Uh, we've got a tight fit. Filler's dry, grab some 150 grit paper and uh, getting rid of all the excess. So it's a gorgeous day uh, here in Southern California. Grab myself a can of turquoise paint. I'm gonna quickly get my uh, coat sprayed on, grab my uh, swim trunks, and I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. Hi everyone at home. It's December 29th here in LA County. We're at Mother's Beach, and instead of building something today, Celios is trying to paddleboard. He already fell in once. <laughs> Which I'm really sad that I missed on film, but nice way to spend a December day for sure. So as promised, uh, when I get done here, I'm gonna grab my tools, sharpen up, and get to some turning. We're making our own uh, doorknobs for this thing. Remember, you want sharp tools all the time. So here I just got a scrap piece of walnut chucked up in my uh, lathe. I'm just uh, making it round here with my gouge. And I don't have a particular shape in mind. I'm kind of coming up with this one on the fly. So I'm going to make one, use some friction polish uh, to get it all shined up. And I'm going to use that first one as a template to make my second. Wow, I am really impressed uh, with the quality of the spray can uh, finish. Uh, absolutely amazing. I am super happy with it. So here I'm just measuring down uh, three and a half inches uh, from uh, the top rail and bottom rail. And I'm using this wonderful little jig that makes using these soft closed hinges a breeze to install. It gives you uh, all the locations. You just punch them out with your awl drill them out and you are good to go. All that's left is to adjust the cabinet. So here I'm just tilting my uh, blade to 45 degrees, uh, grab two scrap pieces of poplar and I am uh, getting them cut for the French cleat. So we're outside, I'm going to show you guys uh, what this French cleat system is all about. Uh, so uh, this inside piece here is beveled at a 45 degree angle to the outside. I've got another piece of scrap cut with a 45 degree angle. Uh, this is, pretend this is the wall this cabinet's going to be hanging from. This piece is going to be attached to the wall and you're just going to go ahead, slip your cabinet on just like that. Super secure and easy. People out there, our cabinet is done and this thing looks amazing. Now we're gonna go ahead and get it installed. I got the other uh, half of the French cleat uh, up on the wall, uh, screwed into two studs. And this is all you do, you lift your cabinet and you just set it down. It's that easy, I love the French cleat. Guys, if you like this video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.